Sure. Uh, the library's close. Thank you. Mark. Mark, this is Alan. I'm sitting here with Karen, and we're going over some finances. And it looks like we need to shift some things around to fund Jeff's Africa trip. Long story short, we're going to have to freeze your account. Colin, you told me you're never going to do this to me again. It's nothing personal, Mark, but I have to do what's best for the magazine. What about next month's special issue, Lewis and Clark? I know you've been working hard on the Lewis and Clark bit. Alan, I'm in the middle of the major story. I thought we'd put Jack on the centerpiece. We both know that Jack's riding caters to amateurs. But hey, if that's the direction you want to take expedition, by all means, Jack's your guy. All right, Mark. If you want the centerpiece, you've got 30 seconds. Well, I was summoned through Meriwether's journal, and I came across an entry marked September 23rd, 1805, in which he gives an account of an experience he had with the Nez Perce tribe. He was privileged to witness a rare and sacred ceremony that takes place only once every 100 years, in which the tribe designates one member to go on a, a sacred voyage from which there's no return. They call it a quest of time. A quest of time? I'm not quite seeing your angle here. Hear me out, on this is where things get interesting. I'm looking through the archives, and I find a missing persons report dated 1905 for a certain Thomas Wainwright who goes missing near the Bitterroot Mountains. Not only is it 100 years to the date of the Nez Perce ceremony, but it is also in the exact location. It feels like you're reaching here. Native American ceremonies, missing persons report, you're making a lot of assumptions. A centerpiece is more about fact-based journalism. I'm afraid we're going to have to move ahead as planned. Uh, what, what do you want me to do about my expenses? What about the motel? You write for an outdoor magazine. You're in the mountains. What would Lewis and Clark do? Alan. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna pay for this. That's okay. Someone else is taking care of it for you. I know that's you note too. Thanks.
That's great. Oh. Come on, no! No! Yes, information, please. Hi, I need the number for a tow service. I'm, I don't know, I'm in the Bitterroot Mountains. I don't know what county that is. I'm not from here. Yeah, thank you. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm broken down. Out, I'm off of, jeez. I'm off a of gravel road in the Bitterroot Mountains. Um, about a quarter mile past mile marker 12. Yeah, an hour? Yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah, thank you. Stand out here for another hour. <sighs> Come on.
Aren't you a few years late? What year are you from? 2000, 2005. Oh, well then you're right on time. I'm, I'm sorry, who are you? I'm Thomas Wainwright. Mark Benson. I've been anticipating your arrival. It's nice to finally meet my replacement. Replacement? I don't even know where I am. You're in the sands of time. Didn't he explain the details? Who? The Sandman. Now, what am I doing here? Mark, you've been chosen. Chosen? From the beginning of time, it was established that the Earth would provide mankind with her resources. And in exchange, every generation would offer one of their own to live here in the sands of time. Think of it as a payment to live on the planet. The Earth requires a man as payment? I know, it must sound incredible. Thomas, it sounds crazy. Mark, you've been chosen to represent your generation. Chosen? Thomas, I'm just a journalist. I'm not... I'm nothing special. I'm not even a good journalist. I know you didn't ask for this responsibility. And what happens if I say no, Thomas? Everyone you know and love will die, Mark. It's not really much of a choice then, is it? I accept. I'll pay the price. Well, it seems my time here is done, Mark. Thomas, good luck. <laughs>